it's either intrinsically good or it isn't, and for God to say it's good uh, doesn't make it more good, uh, and it's not, it's not good by fiat. So he's either saying it's good because it is good, in which case we can just deal with the fact that it is good, or it's just good because he says it's good, but then he can say any evil thing is good, which Dr. Craig's God does rather often, uh, apparently. So, um, but love is clearly uh, something we, we desperately want in our lives, and we're right to want it. We're deeply social creatures. Uh, and the fear that is sort of circulating here, that's, that, that well-being somehow leaves something out that's important, I think, and I argue at some length in my book, is, is quite unfounded. Because whatever you bring to me which, which is truly important, you say, okay, you're talking about well-being, but here I'm talking about self-transcending love. This is really important. Well, self-transcending love is, a, is a, uh, uh, probably at the core of, of, of the deepest well-being that we can experience as human beings. And, but likewise, if the Christian hell exists and awaits me, uh, well-being in the, in the end is predicated on avoiding those flames. And so, that, I mean, so all of that, you're, you're, still, you're smuggling, smuggling in a concern about consciousness and its future changes, whatever you bring uh, in the moral domain. And, and so I'm, I'm saying we, we must be honest about that. We ground this in consciousness. And then we can talk about how, how human beings like ourselves can, can thrive. And, and I, would, I would grant you that love is, is, is probably on, on the, uh, the top of the list. So this, 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 this idea of that morality comes merely from the mere issuance of a competent authority. What, one of the features of psychopathy is an inability to distinguish true moral precepts that relate to the well-being of, of people and things that merely issue from a competent authority. So if you, if you ask children sitting in a classroom, is it okay to drink a soda in class if the teacher gives you permission? Most of them will say yes. If you, if you ask them, is it okay to punch your neighbor in the face if the teacher gives you permission? They immediately recognize the distinction between a moral infraction and, and uh, uh, a mere conventional rule. And this, and this is very young children. But children at risk for psychopathy don't. Children at risk for psychopathy think that rules are just given by an authority. So if the teacher tells you you can punch a child in the face, you can punch a child in the face. Um, this is, again, I'm not accusing religious people in general of being psychopaths, but there is there's a psychopathic core to this moral worldview. This divine command theory that Dr. Craig is advocating suggests that if God only tells you to sacrifice your firstborn son, it is good to do it. Uh, that's where goodness comes from. And so you've got, you've got people waking up in trailer parks all over America, suffering s some form of mental illness that's, that's destabilized them and made them vulnerable to this way of thinking. And there are people who kill their children thinking they're Abraham who just didn't get uh, uh, interrupted by an angel. Uh, and this is, this is the kind of uh, morality that you get out of a divine command theory that, again, offers no retort to, to the jihadist other than, sorry, Buster, you happen to have the wrong God. Our scriptures were written by people who, by, 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 by virtue of their placement in history, had less access to scientific information and facts and basic common sense than any person in this room. Okay. In, in fact, there's not a person in this room who's ever met a person whose worldview was as narrow as the worldview of Abraham or Moses or Jesus or Muhammad. And mo most of these people, with a few exceptions, had, had a moral worldview that was more or less indistinguishable from that of an Afghan warlord today. And yet Dr. Craig insists that the authors of the Bible knew everything they had to know about the nature of the cosmos and about how to live within it, to guide us at this moment. Okay, I want to suggest to you that this vision of life can't possibly be true. Okay, but just as there's no such thing as Christian physics or Muslim algebra, there can be no such thing as Christian or Muslim morality. Whatever is true about our circumstance in moral terms and in spiritual terms is discoverable now and can be talked about in, in language that it is not an outright affront to everything that we've learned in the last 2,000 years. Okay, what remains for us to discover are the facts in every domain of knowledge 
that will allow the greatest number of us to live lives truly worth living in this world. I mean, how is it that we can build a global civilization, a viable global civilization of now destined to be nine billion people where the maximum number of people truly flourish? That is the challenge we face. Sectarian moral denominations a world shattered, balkanized by competing claims about an invisible God is not the way to do it, apart from the fact that there's no evidence in the first place that should be compelling to us to adopt that view. The only tool we need is honest inquiry. And I would suggest to you that if faith is ever right about anything in this domain, it's right by accident. 